Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from ExecuteAutomation.com and welcome to another video of our Kubernetes for Tester course. And in this video, we'll be talking about installing Kubernetes on Mac OS. All right, so let's get started. Kubernetes can run on various different platforms from your laptop to VM on cloud provider to rack of bare metal server. We are going to install Kubernetes on our Lappy though because I don't really have a VM account, something like an Azure account or a AWS account or Google Cloud account so that I can install VM on the cloud and show you how it works. Rather, we are going to go with a very easy and straightforward way by installing Kubernetes on our laptop or any machine that you got so that it's very easy to start working with Kubernetes and play around and see how we can leverage the power of Kubernetes for our day-to-day -day life. Well, it's going to be pretty much exactly the same that how you deploy Kubernetes on VM on cloud or something like that because the one which we're going to work with laptop is just a replica of how the real-time production environment is going to look like. So for doing that, we are going to make use of what is called as Minikube installation in our laptop. For installing that, we need to have some prerequisite software within our machine. The first one, if you're going to install the software in Windows 10 operating system, then you need to have Docker for Windows with Hyper-V enabled in your machine. So once again, if you have already learned some of my courses on Docker for Windows or understanding the ABC of Docker video series, you might have noticed that we use Docker for Windows and the Hyper-V enabled within our machine. And Mac operating system users, all you have to have is a Docker for Mac installed within your machine. So that's it. So this is the basic prerequisite they need to have for getting started with the mini cubes within your Mac or Windows operating system. So installing the mini cube is very, very easy. Not just mini cube is going to be very helpful because we need to have an access to the mini cube from a command line utility so that we can interact with the clusters, masters, and send commands to create a pod or service or deployments that we discussed in our introduction video. So for that, we need to have what is called as a cube CTL command line utility so that we can interact with it. And once again, we I guess we have just probably discussed about it a little bit on our introduction video, but we are going to install the kubectl in this video. So for Mac OS, you need to have minikube installed that you can do using what is called as a homebrew command, something like brew cask install minikube, and then you need to install the Kubernetes CLI tool, which is nothing but the kubectl tool using the brew install Kubernetes CLI. And for Windows guys, you can install what is called as Chocolatey and using Chocolatey you can install the Minikube and then you can do a Choco install Kubernetes CLI. And once again, for Mac OS, you need to have a homebrew software installed within your operating system. And we have already discussed about this in many of my videos, but I will quickly show you how you can get the homebrew installed within your Mac OS. All you need to have is this one the homebrew formulae. So you can download the homebrew within this uh, uh, link that you got. So if you go to the homebrew, you can just search for homebrew uh, Mac and you can search that and you can see there is a brew.sh. So you can go to this link and you can uh, just copy the whole command and you can run this in your terminal. So this will install a homebrew uh, installation within your machine. And once the homebrew is installed, you can easily uh, install all these different commands, something like uh, mini cubes or Kubernetes CLI. And once again, the installation part, as you can see in here, the mini cubes uh, GitHub, this is the uh, command that you need to install for the Mac operating system for the mini cube. And then for the Windows, you need to have something called as chocolatey. So you can just search for chocolatey. You can see this one is a package manager for Windows. And you can see that this is pretty much like Homebrew, this guy. And this is for Windows version though. Uh, and you can see the installation is very, very simple as well. All you have to do is open your PowerShell and then you can just copy paste this particular uh, command line in your PowerShell so that you can install chocolatey. Once chocolatey is installed, then you can just install the Minikube and Kubernetes CLI from the chocolatey uh, utility. So very, very straightforward and simple. So I will quickly show you this option in our Mac OS so that you can install the Minikube and Kubernetes CLI within your Mac OS. And then that's it. So this is the only thing you need to do. 
And since Windows 10 by itself has the Hyper-V installed within your machine, since you install the Docker for Windows with Hyper-V enabled, you don't really necessarily have a separate driver while you run the Minikube though. But for Mac OS, we need to have a driver. So this is the one which I'm talking about, the Xhive driver. So Minikube uses a Docker machine to manage the Kubernetes VM. So it benefits from the driver plugin architecture the Docker machine uses to provide a consistent way to manage various VM providers. Minikube embeds VirtualBox and VMware Fusion driver, so there is no additional steps to use them. However, other drivers requires an extra binary path to present in the host path. So since we're going to use the Xhive driver, we need to install the Xhive driver as well. And again, for installing the Xhive driver, all you have to do is just use this brew command once again, the same home brew command, uh, brew install docker machine driver xhive, and then just copy paste this guy so that you can get the owner permission for this particular directory. That's it. So this is the only simple thing that you need to do. And once again, I just copy pasted the xhive driver thing from this particular URL. So you can just go here, xhive, and you can see there is this uh, xhive installation uh, path. So I can just copy paste this command so that it will start working from there. That's it, right? So this is the only thing that we need to do for the installation of the xhive driver within our Mac OS. So let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm gonna flip to item terminal window for me in Mac operating system. So I'm just gonna look for what is called as an item. It's a terminal window editor that I have in my Mac operating system which is this one so I'm just gonna bring to this screen so this terminal editor is the one which I'm gonna use for our demonstration purpose for the whole course so you can install this item too in your Mac as well so it's very very handy it's really cool tool I really like the fact that you can do a lot of different stuffs here and you can you can do something like an opening a new tab new window and you can copy paste pretty easily like PowerShell and I really like the matter of fact that you can change a lot of things from uh, this particular uh, terminal window so you can see there are different kinds of colors you can use I have seen a lot of students asking me why don't you use different color because it's not very visible so I'm just going to use the solarized light color this time so that it's very very visible and very easy to follow through all right so the first thing is going to be the installation of of our Minikube. So for doing that, if you see here, all we have to do is just copy paste this command, brew cask install Minikube. I actually have installed the Minikube and kubectl in my machine, so I don't really have to necessarily install anything other than that. Just copy paste the commands over here. You're pretty good to go. So you can see that I already have kubectl. You can see that this is the command. If I use this kubectl, it gives you all the information of your uh, kubectl and you can see I have a minikube and hit enter so it brings me the minikube as well so I have minikube uh, CLI tool for provisioning uh, and managing single node cluster optimized for development workflows so you can see it only has a single node Kubernetes cluster instead of having multiple nodes so that's mainly because it's for a development purpose it's not the real-time thing right so both of them are already installed and I have also installed the xhive driver. So this is the driver which I'm talking about. So if you go over here to the xhive, this one. So I just copy pasted this one and I run these two commands so that I can uh, run the xhive driver as well. So I'm not really showing anything here. As I said, this is an installation, but I'm not really doing any installation here because these are pretty straightforward. All you have to do is just copy paste here so that you can install that in your machine. Very, very simple and straightforward thing. So we'll quickly see how it looks like with starting a very, very simple Minikube cluster. So all you have to do is this. Minikube start a VM driver. So I'm specifying the VM driver here as xhive because I have already installed the xhive in my uh, in my machine. So I'm just going to start that and hit the enter. You can see that it is going to start the mini queue for me in my Mac operating system. And also ensure that you are running the Docker already within your uh, Mac OS. So you can see that my Docker is currently running. Uh, so this is the uh, uh, stable version I got, the community edition. So I'm running that. And you can see that uh, the 
Kubernetes is currently spinning up. So basically this will uh, start a cluster with one node. So there will be one master and there will be one node as we discussed in our introduction videos so that we can do connectivity and start doing a deployment over there. And you can see that it is uh, currently starting a VM. So we'll talk about what these things are actually happening starting our next video, but I'm going to quickly show you uh, how it looks like basically. I know this is something more than what the introduction video or the installation video is all about, but I'm just trying to show you like this is what the starting of the uh, Minikube is going to look like, right? So Minikube has been started and then you can do a lot of different commands from here, something like you can get the uh, nodes running within your uh, Oops, you can get the nodes running within your Minikube using the kubectl. So you can do the kubectl get nodes. You can see there is a node running. So there is a master which is currently running. And then you can also get the parts running within your machine. And you can see that I'm currently running the Selenium node parts here so that I can run the uh, Selenium grid here. So I have already did everything within my machine so that I can demonstrate it much clearly. Uh, instead of having so many hiccups during the recording. All right, so starting our next video, we'll start to understand what is this master or what are the different components available within master and what are the different kinds of components available in Node and how to create these parts and how to spin up different services, deployments, replication controllers and things of that nature to get to this state. So once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.